What's the square footage? This is 8,300 square feet inside yeah. and uh, 1,100 outside. Calicutta, Borghini marble. This house is kind of like a perfect example of like, don't judge a book by its cover. Because the cover is the block, and the block is okay. But then you go inside, and it's like knockout. How many floors is it? Seven floors. Beautiful. You have really high ceilings. It's so much yes, glass. Yes, every like floor is floor to ceiling windows. All right, let's keep going. Up. Huge soaking tub by Victorian Albert. Bianco Dolomite tile from Italy. Travertine fireplace. Beautiful. I almost like, don't you. want to touch anything. Thank you. We did the staging as well. Very nice. There is nothing that warms my heart more than a seven-story listing that's already staged. They're huge kids' rooms. I know. They're so fun. The staging is so cute. Thank you. I mean, like, that would have cost me Fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow, huge views. There's Google, mm -hmm. Hudson Yards. Everything is literally just around you. It's a beautiful house. How long did it take to do? About two and a half years. It's a long time. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing was digging down. A lot of digging. Down where? <laughs> how? How can there be more? Shut up. Whole kitchen's Italian designed. It's all oh, beautiful. My God, it feels so good. I've been very vocal in the past about my love for marble. I get like aroused. Can I kiss it? Sure. But lately, <laughs> I've been expanding my horizons. Holy moly! Swiping right for some other materials. This is like a cashmere. Yeah, it's a cashmere. I love me them all. Wow. It's a beautiful staircase. Hard wood. I just want to stroke that oak. This is so sexy. The leather, the windows, the light. There's a bunch of terraces. How many terraces? Five total. Wow. I can see like it's high tech. The home AV system is Savant. Yeah, that's expensive. This is like $250,000. Yeah. yeah. These guys bought this for four and a half million, put two and a half million in. They're in it for seven. It's a wonderful apartment. But when you're spending millions and millions of dollars and doing exotic stones and going all out, you might not get it back. So here is office slash nursery. Yeah, that's not a legal bedroom. No. It's just a big loft. It's basically a big one bedroom. Mm -hmm. How yeah. much is that shower? The shower's 100,000. And what is all well, of this? Be careful, they come out on the sides too. Whoa, ah! Ah! I'm telling you, ah! I told you not to do that. God, <laughs> Frederick, oh my God. My commission just went off. <laughs> Look how gorgeous this is. You can dry out here. Wow. I know, right? That's insane. I'm really impressed. You, know, you really could do anything here. So I don't know many people who have donkeys and mini horses in their penthouses in New York. The zoning really allows you to do whatever you really need. Wedding venue, event space, hotel, spa. We have people looking at it as an art foundation. This could be 100 plus rooms, the structure, if you break it up. What about the septic system? Septic system. It's the woods. <laughs> I mean, that's what someone's going to have to put in. It just needs a magical touch to bring it back to its glory. So how many acres are in the whole estate? Just under 160 acres in total which is massive. There's enough acres to do a farm to table, bring in a top tier chef. And it's still within that two hour kind of yeah. window from New York yeah. City. The potential's unbelievable. This is the barn. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's done an ax throwing competition in their penthouse in New York. <laughs> you know, right now it's at a price that's way lower than it's ever been seen, 2.495. He wants to sell it. Ulster County, we have all the filming going on. This would be a great studio. Well, help me uh, gonna, bring it to, uh, sell it. yes, <laughs> I love it. This event, I gotta say, it's great. Whoa! All right, let me try. Can't be good at everything. I'm just gonna stick to real estate. All right, I'll be back for real. Call your buyers in the meantime. I got a call from him yesterday, which is why I wanted to meet today. Okay. I don't know if you saw, there's a New York Times article that came out yesterday. I actually have it on my phone. 
What's coming to New York in 2019? 20,000 new homes, making it an even stronger buyer's market. So then to him as a buyer, stock market's tanking left and right. Political world's all over the place. And the New York Times is telling me not to buy because it's going to get worse. And he no longer wants to move forward. At, at, at any price. At any price. He just called me and said, listen, I can't do this right now. It's been so hard. This is the third time it's really happened to us, where we've gotten really close. We've been just discussing the minutiae, the details, and you know, people have backed out, and it's been a really hard process. Right. It's just incredibly frustrating. Right. Yeah, I feel for these guys, but if you want to sell, you need to sell. It's been on and off the market now for three years. It's really, really disheartening. Had they acted quickly, and we'd gone to contract quickly, then we wouldn't be in this position. But it's super, super frustrating, and I'm very sorry. So where do we go from here? The issue that you have now is on, like, monthly cost, right? Yeah. And it's just kind of carrying the house, and it's cash flow. Yeah. So if the market is going to be so against us, no matter what, we either lower the price or... I don't think we can do that. We're, just, we're at our break-even right now. We've lowered it and lowered it and yeah. lowered it, and it's just like, at some point, we just... Yeah. I mean, I think that there's, you know, if we have to, I think we, we would rent it and at least try to cover our, our carrying costs. Okay. So if you want to rent it, yeah. which you can, we find that person, then it'll be very difficult to also sell it. What about this job? I mean, this job has six months in it. Like, maybe we talk to her and see if she'd be interested. I mean, it's, she's got four kids and that has plenty of bedrooms, so. Ah. Oh. If they rent it to her, then I lose out on a rental commission, and I also lose out on any sale commission that I would get. We know her. We know her. I mean, I know that. So the family that's supposed to be moving into this house? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's she's in the market. She's looking for a temporary rental until this is finished because she just she sold her loft earlier than expected. So. Lucky her. It is an opportunity for us to make some money. Yeah, we certainly appreciate everything you've done for us. OK. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for meeting here. Yeah. Appreciate it. Sorry, I couldn't bring you better news. God damn it. Like, I didn't get into this business to list houses to not sell them. When I left New York, I thought I was going to, I thought it was going, everything was going to be flying balloons and flying elephants. I'm going to Paris, you know. I, I told you, in five days. What are you doing in Paris? I want to live to a place you've never been to. That's the beauty of it. I was going to be happy ever after. <laughs> but it was the opposite. I fell in love with a girl for the very first time in my life. And when she left, she abandoned me. And I've never been abandoned before. And it felt, it felt very, very... Um... She broke your heart. Yeah. Her name was Nikita. She was so beautiful and so different than every other girl. So I became very much in love with this woman. So when we broke up, it broke my heart a lot. Because not only did I lose my, uh, the person I was in love with, I also lost my best friend. I loved this girl so much, I started blaming myself. But that, that blaming myself took me to a very bad place until the point that after a while, it stopped even becoming about her and started becoming about me. And all my life, I've been so positive. And all my life, I've been uplifting people and I've been inspiring people. And for the first time, I was the opposite of everything I thought I needed to be. And I didn't want to bother anybody with this shit. Deep inside, I was depressed, all right? Even me, myself, right at this point, I struggle with saying so because we're, we're taught that that little thing called depression, it's something to run away from and something to not speak about, something that we're taught to be ashamed of. And keeping it inside and talking to you as if it never happened to me, it would be the biggest lie to myself and to you. And if I didn't come back here, I wouldn't be here. So that's why I'm here. Listen, man. I've always been a very positive person. You know, my desire to just get better, better every day. You know, I went to Paris. I wasn't working, so I had nothing I was actually building. No structure. No structure whatsoever. 
I can't, I can no longer feel like this about myself. Maybe it's time for a plan. Maybe I can just come back and just decide and be very selective and particular about the things that I want to work with within real estate. Listen, whenever. No, it has to be now. Now? Yeah. You know, the, the beauty about real estate is, uh, it's, you know, it, it teaches you so much. I have to admit that I miss this city a lot. Now it's time to get back to work. Actually, I kind of needed this conversation because I needed to put myself in that mindset. Feels really good to have you here. He's back! So, back into business. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're gonna scream to New York. Okay, he's not changed. Hey guys. <laughs> Subscribe if you like the video. Click here to watch more.